Filipino is a niche demographic and needs to be grouped with Asian Americans to become more sellable. Okay, uh, yes and no. Hi, I'm Jeremiah Abraham. I'm a producer and founder and CEO of Tremendous Communications. I have this tab full of hot takes and I'm gonna read each of them one by one and let you know what I think. In a predominantly white industry like media and entertainment, APIs have to work twice as hard to get a chance at roles behind and in front of the camera. I think this is true for all like POCs. I don't know how many times I've been at a table with all like non-POCs and then people turn to me and I'm just like, well, I'm not Latinx. I'm not I, I don't feel comfortable representing the black community. Like, why would you ask me that question? You know, I did find in my career that non-POC folks were, pr were promoted over me, even though I had more experience. Luckily, uh, there are more POCs in the room now than when I first started my career. But yeah, before it was really hard. Marketing Asian-centric films, specifically Filipino films, are hard because Hollywood doesn't see them as profitable. I think this is changing, honestly, after all the great films that have been coming out, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Yellow Rose, Lingua Franca, Crazy Rich Asians. One of the things that Diane Pragas actually realized is, is this specific need for Yellow Rose. So she brought me on both as the publicist and as the co-producer because then we were able to really shape all the cultural nuances were. I was able to take a look at the script. For the most part, a lot of them are not Asian Americans, even the ones that strategize uh, for Asian American audiences. Now we are being greenlit more often. I do think that there is more work to be done in terms of convincing these studios to not only make stories about us and not only put us in front of the camera, but also to put us in all aspects of production and behind the camera and all those folks who are green lighting at that table or that Hollywood table is also represented uh, of us. Ooh, okay. Filipino is a niche demographic and needs to be grouped with Asian Americans to become more sellable. So back to the Yellow Rose um, example, we did get a lot of uh, people when we're trying to sell the film that said that this film was too small. And we all know what exactly what that meant is that they just couldn't figure out how to position it, how to sell it, how to market it. And I was like, well, you market it the same way that you market to non-Filipinos, like we also like horror, we also like drama, we also like family and, and rom-coms. It's tough because we're selling ourselves as Filipinos in Hollywood and we're selling our, our specific stories and people see it as niche, you know, we need to position it more as th these are human stories and then the Filipino comes out of your interactions, your relationships, and how you make decisions and how things are portrayed. But I think that's also what gravitated people toward Yellow Rose and Lingua Franca is that it wasn't necessarily a Filipino film, it was a human story based off of Filipino people. I would say that we've been working toward a movie like Easter Sunday for, for decades. I mean, you had the debut, you had all of the work that Dante Bosco did, you have Isabel Sandoval, Dan Pragas, and all these wonderful Filipino movies and all the advocates for Filipinos in Hollywood that have been so loud and very vocal about our representation for a long, long time. So I'm glad that you know we all uplifted and continue to uplift Joe Coy because he's such a staple in representing us on the mainstream. And then you have all those folks like Bruno Mars and her who are really pushing for Filipino representation. So honestly, I think it culminates and it builds on top of each other. And I'm glad that now we have this film that is the first studio film to be released around a Filipino American family. And hopefully that helps greenlight more productions and more stories later down the line. Filipinos have always been very resilient, especially in Hollywood. I think we're the loudest group, honestly, in, in terms of asking for, or not asking, demanding for our faces on screen. So I think that it's gonna drastically change soon. Hey One Down, thanks for having me on Tabo Takes today. Uh, you can find me uh, on Instagram at Jer Abraham, as well as at Tremendous Communications. We're also on Twitter. Tremendous works to uplift Asian Americans in media and entertainment, so we work on some really great films, hopefully more TV shows also. But check us out, we're doing some cool stuff. <laughs>